Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Damien O'Brien and thank you for tuning into this video. Now, this week's featured artist is my really good friend, Michael O'Brien. And before you guys ask, no, we are not related. We've checked, we've Googled it, and I even asked my mum and she said I don't have a brother named Michael. Now, Michael has come up with an amazing new effect called Timey Wimey. It's a brilliant card trick. You guys are really going to love this. It's amazing, it's taught so well, it's so easy to do as well. You're not gonna struggle with this. It's a great effect. I'm gonna put some links to Michael's work in the description. Michael is an amazing magician, so I want you guys to check out his stuff, check out his channel. He's got a lot of amazing effects for sale, so definitely check them out. I'm gonna put a link to all his products. So guys, make sure you check out Michael's work too. Now, before we get into the tutorial, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button at the bottom yeah hit that button and click like and leave a comment guys because you know we appreciate the comments and i love to read them too and i try to reply to as many as i can but guys here we go guys before we get into this video i just wanted to pre-warn you uh, the quality is a little bit grainy i apologize for that uh, michael's main camera wasn't working at that moment of time and it was all filmed on an iphone uh, during a live performance so the lighting is not the best, but you can still hear everything amazingly. You can still see it's taught in amazing quality. So guys, let's get into it. This is Timey Wimey by Michael O'Brien. Hello everyone, welcome to the Monday Night Jams in Orange County, California. How are we all doing today? Having a good time? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Today I wanted to show you a new idea that I came up with using some uh, techniques from my new book, The Imagination Project. I thought it would be fun to share it with all of you. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, my dear, what is your name? Isabel. Isabel. Michael, nice to meet nice you. To meet you. Uh, I want to show you something using a pack of cards. But first, I want to show you four very special cards. Okay, these cards are special because they're actually blank. Blank on the face. And uh, these cards are going to represent time and space itself. We're not going to talk about them just yet. We're going to use those in a moment. First, I'm going to go ahead and pick one card, but this is a mystery card. <laughs> a card that only I get to know, and you guys will see in just a moment. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and uh, grab the deck. And you're going to go through the deck, hold the faces towards you so you can see all the cards. Pull any card out that you like, a card that is going to represent you. Any card that you'd like, yeah. Okay. It's okay if I see it. You just go ahead and take it out. All right? I'll take the rest of the deck back. Go ahead and show everyone else the card so that they can see it. Make sure that the camera sees it. Good. Can everyone see the card? All right. We'll go ahead and take it back. And we're going to place it right in between the four blank cards. So we have the five cards here. You can see that your card's not on the top, nor is it on the bottom. But if you just bend time and space itself, just like this, you can actually get one card to come up to the top. Here's the cool part. I can put it on the bottom, bend it again, just like this. It actually vanishes from the bottom and appears on the top. If I place the card into the deck, I can bend space and time. The card sometimes doesn't jump to the top. Sometimes it goes to the bottom. But even cooler than that, we'll go ahead and place it right about the middle of the pack, just like this. You bend time and space just a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't jump to the top. Sometimes it doesn't jump to the bottom. In fact, if you look here, you'll see the card completely vanishes leaving me with just four cards. But the interesting thing about time and space is that I can actually get the card to completely vanish from here and jump right across over here, my mystery card. Now, to be honest with you, a lot of people think that uh, time travel is a, a progression of time, you know, like a linear line starting with cause and ending with effect. But the truth is, time travel is actually more like a ball. A ball of wibbly, wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. stuff. Exactly, exactly. In fact, 
You like that, right? In fact, if we go far enough back, we can even go back before time itself to the very beginning of time, before space and time oh, no. even existed. Oh, no. Thank you so much. You guys want to learn that? You guys want to learn that? Awesome. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right. So we're going to start from the very, very, very beginning. <laughs> All right. So. All right, so this is, how, this is how the effect works. We have a regular standard pack of cards, and here we have four blank face cards. Now, you can use blank cards if you'd like. I like to use the blank cards because they really contrast from the, the selected cards. And also, you can do that fun little kicker ending at the end. But if you really wanted to, any four of a kind of your choice will really work for this routine. If you are going to use a four of a kind, I would suggest using uh, a face card, either a jack, queen, or a king. Uh, that way, when you do that uh, move at the end where you make the selection vanish, uh, it kind of masks the fact that you're going to be showing one of the same cards again. But this is how we start. First, I need to take one of the four blank cards and lose it back into the deck. The way that I do that is I show the cards one at a time, just like this. When I get to the fourth card, I'm going to leave it sticking out just a little bit more than the other cards. As I go to square up on the deck, I'm going to drop that fourth card onto the deck Square up with the pinky break on top and lift everything. So now, there's actually three cards down on the table. Remember your mystery card that I had to go fi find through the deck? I'm simply going to go through the deck until I find the blank card, remove the blank card from the deck, and that becomes my mystery card. So now you're going to go ahead and grab the deck. You're going to find any card that you like. Very good, perfect. And we'll set this deck down on the table. And I'll take the card back. From here, we're going to go ahead and place the card into the middle of the pack. What I'm really doing is actually placing the card on the bottom. And that move is very simple. All I do is take the card and put it on the bottom. Oh, wow. wow. I call that move. What? I call that move putting the card on the bottom of the deck. <laughs> now, I still want the spectators. Yeah, I know. I'm going to do my best. We still want the spectators to think that I'm holding five cards here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count four cards as five, just like this. And the way that we do that is very simple. You're going to take one card. When I go to uh, take the next card, I'm actually going to put this card back. Take the next card. Then the next card, then the next card, and then the last card goes on top. So the situation that we end up is now this, with the selection second from the top. Which makes it really easy for me to go ahead and perform a double lift to show that the card has jumped to the top. Place that uh, indifferent card, the card from the top of the packet, onto the table. Place everything on top. Show that the card has jumped to the top again. We're going to do that same move again where we uh, pretend to stick it in the middle, except it goes to the bottom. Show that the card hasn't jumped up to the top. That, in fact, it's jumped to the bottom. And then for the last move, we're going to take this card, and we're actually going to put it second from the top, sort of like you're doing a Marlowe tilt type move. It goes second from the top. Show that the card's not on the top. It's not on the bottom. And then from here, you're going to perform an Elmsley count. The Elmsley count looks like this. That's what makes the card vanish. Now, we're going to uh, break down the Elmsley count just a little bit so we can kind of see what's going on here. So remember, the card is second from the top if you're looking at it from the back. Uh, third card over to the left if you're holding the cards right in front of you. What you're going to do to perform the Elmsley count is you're going to drag the top card into the left hand. Using the right thumb, you're going to kick over a block of two cards. And this is actually a double lift here. You're going to kick over that block of two cards. And you're going to trade the card in the left with the block of cards in the right. It looks like this. I'll try to do a super exposed version. Just like this. And then you're simply going to deal the last two cards out on top of it, just like so. So one more time at speed. 
drag the top card into the left, pick over a block, steal that card, and then just place the last two cards on top. From here, you can turn the cards over, show the backs, show that you really only have four cards. Don't do this, <laughs> okay, because they'll see that card there. But you can show the cards on the backs. Now you're probably wondering, how do I get the card to switch places with the cards on the table? This is where a fun little move called the Mexican turnover comes in. All I'm gonna do is take this uh, card here, the very top card, which is the selection, place it underneath the card on the table, and I'm actually gonna pick up both cards, turn them over, and drop <coughs> the uh, selected card down on the table, and then everything else gets placed down. So far, so good? Yeah. Awesome. Now, a lot of you may be wondering, Mike, what about the blank deck at the end? The deck switch. That's my favorite part of the whole routine. Honestly, you can end it here. But if you wanted to take it one step further and do the deck switch, I have a really fun idea that I came, with, uh, came up with, which I like to call the switcheroo. Now, the switcheroo uses a special gimmick. I'll show you guys the gimmick. It's this little guy right here. OK? If you want to make your own gimmick, it's really easy. All you have to do is take like a card case, cut the card case in half, use the bottom half of the case, uh, tape or glue a, a little clip onto it, so you have something that looks like this. What's going to happen is uh, the deck is sit neatly inside the little, uh, the little case, just like this. Right? So now when I need to steal the deck out, all I have to do is just take the deck right out, and it slips right into this hand, just like this. So let's go ahead and take a look at that uh, deck switching technique that we did in this routine. So here I have a deck of uh, blank face cards that match the uh, blank face cards that I use at the beginning of the routine. We're gonna set the deck inside of the holdout just like this. And then the holdout gets placed in the rear left trouser pocket. Now here is how we execute the switch. So uh, we're going to take it back, just a little bit of a rewind to the part where you select a card, okay? I'm going to go ahead and hand you the deck. Go ahead and go through the deck and find any card that you like. Now where is the majority of everyone's eyes right now? All the heat is on the spectator, which makes it really easy for me to casually drop this hand to the side, right? So you have your card. I'm going to take the deck back. As I do that, this hand is literally just going to take the deck out of the holster and I'm going to hold it here casually at my side, just like this. I take the rest of the deck, and I'm gonna say, go ahead and show everyone else the card so that I don't see it. From there, all I have to do is just bring this hand down, and then casually bring this <coughs> hand up. The misdirection's built in because everyone's looking at that. From there, this, uh, the deck just gets placed inside my rear pocket. You can show everyone the card, and then I'm just gonna nonchalantly place the deck down, like I don't need the deck anymore. We go on to the rest of the routine, and at the very end, I get that beautiful little moment of, whoa, when we reveal the blank cards. Thank you so much, everyone. My name is Michael O'Brien. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I would also really like to thank Damien O'Brien for including me on his YouTube channel. Thank you so much, Damien. No relation, my brother from another mother, but I really appreciate you having me out. Uh, if you would like to learn this routine, or, or should I say, if you'd like to uh, learn routines like this routine, I highly suggest you pick up my book, The Imagination Project. It has over 30 full-length effects in here using cards, uh, a lot of gaff deck stuff, uh, deck, uh, stuff with a bar deck of cards. And also, if you like using other objects, there's plenty of magic to go around. Coins, uh, sponge balls, uh, a little bit of mentalism, a chop cup routine even a routine using ordinary objects like a rose, for example. But that's it. You can pick up this copy at obrienmagic.com. Again, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And until next time, keep practicing. Yeah,